Welcome to part 2 of our tutorial on op amp circuits okay and in this uh, tutorial uh, we're just going to show you two very important circuits of the op amp okay so here we're just going to introduce you to the uh, non-invert I mean the unity gain buffer and the comparator so we just you know start off with the comparator first so there we go yeah that's the comparator so the comparator is basically a circuit constructed using an op amp which just compares voltage I mean two input voltage levels applied on the inverting and non-inverting terminals respectively so if we just you know take uh, an op amp okay uh, and you know take its two inputs okay so a comparator it's you know uh, just um, it's mention worthy that the uh, comparator you know works in the open loop mode of the op amp so uh, basically uh, here if we just you know apply or rather yeah if we just you know, apply a time varying input voltage at the positive input terminal of the op amp that's the non-inverting input and on the other hand we just ground the negative input terminal that's the inverting input then what we'll find is that the op amps you know output voltage you know would saturate to either the positive or the negative voltage levels okay so depending upon the variation of this uh, analog or rather you know sinusoidal input at the uh, non-inverting input terminal okay so if we just you know uh, go forward and uh, draw the graph of this circuit quickly so then we'd find something like this okay so here's the graph okay so here's the input voltage and there's the output voltage now let's say for the input voltage let's say we um, have a graph that would look you know something something like this since it's a yeah sinusoidal signal okay so and now on the other hand if we just you know uh, do the same for the output voltage then we'll find here that uh, the uh, negative that's the inverting input terminal of the op amp you know being uh, kept at the ground voltage levels what happens is that as I said the comparator basically you know um, compares the two voltage levels on its two input terminals so it just you know compares the voltage level of VI with the present level I mean with uh, the ground voltage and for the moments whenever you know the ground I mean uh, whenever VI would be greater than ground the op amps output would switch to the positive saturation voltage level and on the other hand whenever the uh, you know time varying input signal that's VI would be you know less than the ground voltage the op amps output would just you know swing towards the negative saturation voltage levels okay so here we can see that since the comparison takes place with respect to the ground voltage okay which is just fixed okay so here uh, we can see that whenever uh, this sort of in you know, a comparison occurs and whenever uh, the input voltage that's VI is greater than the ground voltage then in this case okay basically here are the deviations concerned okay so in the case when uh, the VI is greater than the ground voltage then the output of the op amp you know just quickly switches to the positive saturation voltage levels so here it is plus V sat okay and now since this input terminal is just connected I mean this is uh, this input voltage just applied to the non-inverting input so the voltage at non-inverting input being higher in the first half cycle the output of the op amp switches to the positive saturation voltage level and uh, whenever uh, the in the next half cycle whenever the voltage at I mean at the non-inverting input you know falls below the ground voltage as, as it goes into the negative voltage levels in this case so then the output of the op amp you know uh, rather the voltage on the negative that's the inverting input terminal being higher than that of the non-inverting input terminal the output of the op amp you know swings to the negative saturation voltage that's minus V set respectively so here as we can uh, basically see that the op amp actually sees uh, which of I mean the volt I mean yeah the op amp over here basically you know monitors that the voltage level I mean which voltage level on which of its input is higher okay so it just monitors which of the voltage levels at its inputs is higher so whenever the input voltage I mean whenever the voltage level on its non-inverting input that's its positive input is higher okay it just outputs a I mean yeah it just outputs uh, the voltage level okay equal to the positive saturation voltage level okay and whenever the uh, voltage level I mean input voltage level on its uh, inverting input terminal is higher then the output of the op amp is just you know the negative saturation voltage level okay so this uh, you know uh, behavior of the op amp you know, basically you know 
originates from the fact that we had discussed back in uh, the uh, previous tutorial on op amp basics so here I draw the graph once more that's the ideal voltage transfer curve so here we can see that the you know uh, output voltage level of the op amp you know basically uh, gets fixed or rather just swings to the positive saturation voltage level whenever the input difference voltage over here which is let's say I had just you know uh, kept you know let's say we just call the voltage on the uh, non-inverting input terminal as V1 and that on the inverting input terminal as V2 so whenever we see here whenever uh, basically uh, V1 is greater than V2 then the input difference voltage right here uh, at the inputs of the op amp that is VID which is equals to basically V1 minus V2 is you know becomes positive so whenever this happens the output voltage of the op amp just quickly shoots to the positive saturation level and that's why we have this phenomena right over here so on the other hand whenever uh, you know V1 is you know actually less than V2 then in that case basically so what we have here in this case is that V1 being less than V2 so the out I mean the voltage applied at the inverting input terminal is greater than that of the non-inverting input so during this case the term V1 minus V2 becomes you know negative and when that happens the op amp output you know quickly swings to the negative saturation voltage level right over here so in this case this phenomena results so as you can see here uh, from this uh, characteristic of the op amp we have this uh, curve and finally the operation of the comparator so here uh, the fact is mentioned worthy whenever we apply this input I mean time varying input signal to the uh, non-inverting input of the op amp so this configuration is known as a non inverting uh, comparator okay so on the other hand if we just you know go forward and uh, make the circuit uh, somewhat like this as we can see as I'm just going to show you over here if we just you know ground the uh, you know non-inverting input and apply this time varying uh, input signal to the uh, basically to the inverting input of the op amp then this configuration would be known as the inverting comparator okay yeah so uh, it's not necessary that we have to ground one of the inputs of the op amp whenever we're doing this we can also you know incorporate a you know reference voltage right over here something like this okay so now uh, having connected a voltage source as you can see a DC voltage source that remains in you know, a constant uh, over here with respect to time so whenever uh, we're doing this then uh, for this case we can keep the voltage level you know fixed at any value that we want to so if let's say here we just assume a voltage level you know kept fixed at let's say 2 volt you know other than the ground voltage then here the comparison would take place with respect to uh, 2 volts so here uh, if we just you know would draw a solid line okay corresponding to let's say 2 volts in this case then we would have basically uh, the output you know looking somewhat or rather yeah we would have this output you know looking somewhat like this I'll show you by a different color here so there you go so in this case the output levels you know would change slightly so we'd have the op amp uh, output you know shifting to the positive saturation level but for a shorter interval that we had for uh, the previous case so in this case what happens is that the reference or rather the comparison being made with respect to uh, two volts over here as we can see so here whenever uh, the input voltage level you know just uh, becomes you know higher than two volts only then the transition of the op amps output takes place to the positive saturation voltage other than that whenever the uh, input voltage level you know falls below two volts okay then the output of the op amp you know just swings to the negative saturation voltage levels okay so here we can see the reference uh, to which the comparison is made that is two volts over here is just higher than the ground voltage okay and hence this uh, Volt, I mean this uh, you know uh, 
input voltage you know across which or rather uh, re with respect to which we compare the uh, I mean yeah the comparison is made the fixed voltage source applied to the non I mean to the inverting input is re here referred to as the reference voltage source or VREF okay so we can also you know just reverse the connection between uh, the two to obtain such a configuration as we have here in case of an inverting comparator we can also you know uh, connect a reference voltage source in an inverting comparator okay here this is known as VREF okay and here also the same sort of you know effect will be uh, seen as that seen right over here so we can see that whenever um, by applying a you know sinusoidal uh, wave at the input to the op amp you know a square wave basically results so it's often called a square wave generator okay it's known often as a square wave generator or it's sometimes also called a analog to digital converter okay so analog to digital converter as you know uh, basically square waves are much more useful in digital electronics so it's just uh, you know used to convert the analog signals that are coming in sinusoidal waveform to uh, the square wave voltages okay so having said that we just quickly move on to the other uh, circuit in uh, under discussion that we have today that's the unity gain buffer okay so here we have the unity gain buffer so this, if we just remember uh, or rather if I'll just remember the circuit of the non-inverting input I mean the non-inverting amplifier from uh, op amp circuits part one then over there we had an input resistance connected to the uh, non I mean to the inverting input terminal and a feedback resistance over here RF okay connected uh, I mean connecting the uh, inverting uh, input of the op amp to its output so on the other hand the uh, input terminal at uh, the inverting input being grounded okay and the input signal being applied to the non-inverting input we have the circuit of the non-inverting amplifier as you can see here so from this circuit in that uh, previous part one of the tutorial we have just uh, derived a relationship of the gain where the gain is basically equals to you know something like this one plus RF by R1 so from this equation if we just you know uh, go forward and you know just short R1 or rather you know replace the uh, feedback resistance okay over here so if we just go forward and short RF and replace it by a piece of wire then RF would just be set to zero and then the gain from this equation would be derived as equal to one so this is exactly what we need for a unity gain buffer as we know from the name that's unity gain so this is basically a buffer circuit whose gain is one so whatever we apply at the input we'll, we're gonna get the same thing at the output so here is the circuit of a unity gain buffer as you can see the input is applied to the uh, positive input that's the non-inverting input terminal and the inverting input terminal is shorted to the output terminal of the op amp so and here we can see that the value of R1 I mean the use of R1 is not necessary in this case so we don't exactly connect R1 so it's just you know uh, complication or rather you know piling up of hardware there so we don't use any extra hardware so here in this case uh, the circuit of this um, here the circuit represents the circuit of a unity gain buffer respectively so here what happens is that whatever you know input voltage we apply at the input to this circuit we'd get the same output voltage having the same magnitude and polarity so no reversal no nothing so therefore in this case what happens is that this circuit is basically useful in cases where we need to you know drive a large number of loads okay so let's say we have here an example where we have a let's say a drive circuit you know driving uh, let's say um, a certain number of loads right here let's say we just have LEDs uh, you know acting as loads okay so whenever the number of uh, maximum loads that it can handle you know actually exceeds its limit the voltage limit uh, okay so the, its output voltage levels and current levels you know begin to fall okay and the illumination of these LEDs would just you know uh, begin to basically you know fade away so what's the solution in this case okay so whenever we require to you know drive a large number of you know output devices then we can use okay a unity gain buffer alright in between the drive circuit okay so here in between the drive circuit and uh, the output loads that we need to drive so here if we just connect the output of this uh, unity gain buffer to the input of all the loads that needs to be you know driven respectively and then 
in this case the op amp you know having a very high gain okay actually would help to maintain the voltage levels you know constant okay so it, it'll just you know help to maintain the voltage and the current levels constant in this case so if we have you know the output from the drive circuit as you know 5 volts so the output from the unity gain buffer would be 5 volts too and this would you know be maintained constant to uh, you know for a longer length of time and it can you know be able to you know just be made to you know, handle you know larger number of loads and would uh, be just able to uh, drive them using you know constant voltage and current values for a longer length of time so just having said that that's one of the you know most uh, practical uses of the uh, unit gain buffer as much as possible so just having said that we just wrap up our discussion right here and uh, don't forget to watch our next tutorial on op amps so till then it's just thank you for now and goodbye